Hi! So this is going to be the first techniques of integrations. And keep in mind, whenever we're trying to do an integral, we are pretty much just trying to find an antiderivative for the function, right? And remember, for the derivative, we used to have the power rule, right? So for the antiderivative, we also have the power rule, but then we just have to do it in the reversed version. So this is how we're going to take care of this kind of integrations. So let me show you guys both so we can compare the original version and the reversed version much better. Let's talk about this. Everybody's favorite power rule, right? So to take the derivative of a function that's in the form of x to the n power, this is what we do first. We are going to bring the power to the front, right? And this is step one. And let me indicate this right here. And the first part of the answer, we will have n, that power, and then we multiply by the same x, right? And we are going to subtract 1. This right here is step 2. We minus 1 to the exponent, and then that will be the new exponent right here, n minus 1. And this is it, n times x to the n minus 1 power, and this is the power rule. And you see, I wrote down step 1 and step 2, and this is a multiplication, and this was a subtraction. When we are trying to do the reverse power rule, we are going to reverse the order and then also the kind of the operation. So let's take a look. Earlier right here, we did a minus 1 last, right? This was step 2. Now we have to take care of this exponent first, and then we have to do the opposite operation. So we're going to take care of the power right here first. So what we're going to do is look at this power here, which I wrote it down as n. Earlier, we subtracted 1, but this time, we are going to add 1. So we are going to have n plus 1. And this right here is step 1, when we are trying to do the power rule backwards for integrations. OK, so this is the new exponent now. And earlier, you see, the step 1 was you bring the power to the front, and you multiplied it. This time, we are going to bring the power to the front, but we are going to divide. Dividing by n plus 1, it's the same as saying multiplying by 1 over n plus 1. And this right here is step 2. O in O, let me write down the result. Right here, we will have 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 power. And let's do a quick review. Whenever we're trying to integrate x to a power, what we have to do is we add 1 to the exponent first. And then look at what that exponent is. And we have to divide it by that new exponent. And this is the second step. Okay? However, if you look at this formula here, there's a flaw. Because there's something that we cannot do right here, which will condition right here. Because we have a fraction, 1 over n plus 1, we have to be careful with this. This only works only if n is not equal to negative 1. Because otherwise, if n was equal to negative 1, we will end up with 1 over negative 1 plus 1, which is a 0 in the denominator, and that's no good, right? So that gives us another question. What if n was exactly negative 1? What should we do? So let's look at this real quick. This is just like a side note here. When we're trying to integrate x to the negative 1 power dx, OK? In this particular situation, you look at this, aha, this is a negative 1 exponent, but visually, we don't look at negative 1, right, for the exponent. This is usually written as the integral of 1 over x dx. How does this look like? Keep in mind, we have to remember that to find the integral, it's to find the antiderivative. That means we have to ask ourselves, derivative of what function will give us 1 over x? And the answer to that is, natural log of x, ln x, right here. However, there's a small detail I want you guys to remember. Whenever we're trying to go from the integral of 1 over x to this, ln x, right? This right here, we must attach an absolute value around the x. So the complete answer right here is natural log of absolute value of x, like this, OK? At the end, don't forget the plus c. And then also, don't forget the plus c. So 
this right here was for n is not equal to negative 1 and this was for what if n is exactly negative 1 and I'm going to explain why we must have this absolute value right here for you guys now so let me use this integral to explain why do we need that absolute value this is the integral from negative 3 to negative 2 1 over x dx first of all let's draw the graph we are going to draw the graph of 1 over x and we know the graph of that looks like this looks like that right and then we know this integral goes from negative 3 to negative 2 so that means I'm going to mark here as negative 3 and then I'm going to mark here as negative 2 this integral represents the region bounded from the x-axis and this curve from negative 3 to negative 2 so we are talking about this region right here furthermore we know the answer of this integration right here at the end we'll end up with a negative value because this region is below the x-axis at the end we will have a negative value for the answer okay so you see that this integral has a meaning right so how can we do this integral by fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 so ftc2 tells us that we are going to first find an antiderivative for 1 over x well what can we do well it's just natural log of x right and let me just write it down as how it is for now I'm just going to put down ln x without the absolute value okay so we did the work we found an antiderivative which is ln x and then we will have to plug in negative 3 and negative 2 right and usually I'm just going to draw it like this negative 3 negative 2 and I'm going to plug in the number on the top right here first so we will have ln negative 2 into x like this and this is the first part right and then we'll subtract ln and then plug in this into x which is negative 3 and now let's look at this expression here do we have any trouble what exactly is ln of negative 2 well if you just have this you cannot do it right we cannot have negative numbers inside of an ln and you may be wondering maybe this doesn't make sense well this integral does make some sense it's trying to calculate this area down below the x-axis right here right at the end we will just have negative value for this region here so somehow this must work and the way to fix it is we are going to attach that magical absolute value and let me put this down in a beautiful blue for you guys right here so whenever we're trying to go from the integral of 1 of x into ln x be sure you attach an absolute value around the x so now you see here we will be talking about ln of absolute value of negative 2 likewise ln of absolute value of negative 3 and you see the first part now remember to do the absolute value first absolute value of negative 2 give us ln of positive 2 and then we subtract this is ln of positive 3 then ln2 minus ln3 this is much more doable isn't it okay so by one of the log property whenever you are combining two logs if it's subtraction you can say ln of this over that so this is ln of 2 over 3 this is the answer and let me ask you guys is this negative or positive this right here is in fact a negative value you can use a calculator to check it out or you can just argue it because inside here 2 thirds is less than 1 and ln 1 is 0 and ln is an increasing function but anyways you know this is a negative value so this agree with um, what I said earlier at the end we will end up with a negative value for the answer so this is why we must have the absolute value so at the end this is a summary whenever we're trying to integrate x to the nth power dx we have two things to remember first we are going to do the usual situation we are going to add one to the power first so we have x to the n plus one power and then we are going to divide it by this new exponent dividing by n plus one is the same as saying multiply by one over n plus one so this works if n is not 
negative 1. Okay? If n is equal to negative 1, then this is pretty much saying we are trying to integrate x to the negative 1, which is the same as 1 over x dx. If this is the situation, then we are going to end up ln, and be sure you attach the absolute value, ln absolute value of x. Okay? So this is the first technique that we are going to do for integrations. And check out my next video. I will show you some examples that you have to know. And don't forget the plus C.